Okay. Up next, we have the co-founder of Cancer Q, Zach Weissman. He's trying to jump the gun, I think. Okay, I'm Zach Weisman, co-founder of Cancer Q. So hopefully we make this a little fun and keep everyone awake. So first I kind of want to apologize if I say anything offensive. It's not meant to be offensive. It's meant to push us all forward and in the right direction. So I just wanted to caveat with that first, now that I have your attention. Um, so some of you have probably heard this before, but there's a great short story called This is Water by David Foster Wallace. And the story goes a little bit like this. There's two young fish swimming along in the water, and an older fish swims by the other direction and stops and says, Morning, boys, how's the water? And he swims along. The two young fish keep swimming along, and they stop and look at each other and say, Water? What the hell is water? And David Foster Wallace goes on to elaborate that the most important aspect of that story is often that the most obvious, ubiquitous, important realities are the ones that are the hardest to see and to talk about and therefore to do anything about. So we're going to talk about some of these difficult realities. I'd imagine many people in the office are or in the room are familiar with this show. Yes? Silicon Valley? HBO? All right. Yeah? So, yeah, there's a few. Actually, if you haven't, you should abs if you're here, you should absolutely watch this show. Um, so they make fun of this concept a lot. Um, they, they poke fun about how every startup is up here talking about how they're going to make the world a better place. And he, Gavin Belson is supposed to be basically Google or Google's Hooli. And he says things like, Hooli's about making the world a better place through minimal message-oriented transport layers. And no one knows what the hell he's talking about. Again, for a lot of us in the room, uh, the tech reality, the startup reality looks a lot like this. And believe me, I'm the f biggest proponent of entrepreneurship, um, starting your own company. That's why we're all here. But at some point, you reach maybe a critical mass. Uh, there's a lot of information out there about information overload and what are we doing to our brains and how do you find the right information. And when you start hearing that everything is better, local, new, social, mobile <laughs> from the show, it gets a little overwhelming. And so, but I'm here about to talk about cancer. So many of you might be asking, well, why should I give a damn? Like, I'm busy, what does this have to do with me? Well, cancer's already slated to affect one in three women in their lifetimes. It's slated to affect even worse, one in two men in their lifetimes. My brother and I actually lost our mom to pancreatic cancer in the fall of 2014. It hit us and we never saw it coming. So at Cancer Q, we're trying to start to close this broken, what we call cancer life cycle. Basically, there's three stages. Pre, you're healthy, you're active, like many of you in this room, and cancer hasn't hit. Mits, oh shit, it's hit. Post, you either survive or you lost your life. And that's really the reality. And until you navigate it, you don't realize how disseminated this knowledge life cycle is. These sections aren't talking to one another. That's why when it hits, it's so overwhelming and you don't know really where to go. So our goal with CancerQ is through our products and services to close this life cycle so that we actually start to learn from one another, previous experiences, and build some actual knowledge about this. Again, cancer reality basically looks like this. You have diagnosis questions, just a whole overload of information. Raise your hand if you're not busy. If you would say that you are not a busy person. Oh, we got one. <laughs> Not, Deborah, I know you're busy, so it doesn't count. Right, so imagine I then throw on top of that a life-threatening disease. How do you navigate your current life with this new reality? So we built our first product, the CancerQ dashboard. Think of it as your cancer-fighting home base, your cancer-fighting headquarters. And it does really a whole host of things, but the two main components and real differentiators is one, it lets you get organized. It, we actually say that, hey, you're going to be researching information online. You may have a lot of links and information. You may have notes and you may have files and friends are texting you. We give you a place to store all of that information securely, privately, and share it with friends and family who are in the fight with you. Then at the same time, you get to access curated resources. There are plenty of forums and communities out there. Uh-oh, I saw that. And, but they're not vetted. And so anyone can post anything. So we start to give you vetted resources. And lastly, we built a pay-it-forward model. 
so that anyone can access this dashboard. You can purchase access if you need it now and you're facing cancer. You can give access to a friend or family member. When you hear someone's diagnosed, a lot of us say, well, I didn't know how to help. We've now given you something you can do. You can give the gift of organization. Yeah. And then pay it forward and share resources. Thank you. All right, questions? Where do you get the information? Because I, I know that a lot of primary literature, say, is extraordinarily expensive. Um, and usually you get that through employee access at medical centers and such. But I'm curious on how and what type of information do you use? Yeah, great question. Uh, it's twofold. It's one, we really felt like no one out there was actually taking resources that were publicly available from leading institutions. There's not many sites where you can go on and you can say in one place what MD Anderson, Sloan Kettering, UCSF are all talking about on a particular cancer or the same subject. So we started there. I mean, and that information is publicly available. So it's through our own research, our own curation, and we have what are called Cancer Q ambassadors who have direct experience with a particular type of cancer that also bring some of their own resources to the mix. And then, yeah, eventually it'll mold into some deeper dives into certain content. But initially, the amount of public information is amazing. It's just helping people find it. Over here. Um, what's traction like and how long you've been doing this for? How many people do you have on the platform? And is there a community aspect so people who've gone through it before from an emotional level, like your mom died of uh, cancer, are you on the platform regardless of your pre-midst post to be able to support those people? So traction as well as the emotional aspect. Yeah, the emotional aspect, great question. I got cut off, but the last two components here, pay it forward is anyone can purchase anonymously a dashboard for someone else. So if you've had experience and you say, I know this was terrible, I don't want someone else to have the same experience, you can purchase and then we can then go target those individuals who need access or maybe even can't afford the $30 a year, which is the price point. Share resources is exactly, Deborah, to your point, where we want to get in and we want to allow everyone who has experience to save resources and start to contribute in what they found helpful. I always say cancer is like a year-long research project, and at the end, probably or maybe someone you love dies and no one asked you for your work. So we want to start fixing that and giving people a place that they can share the resources that they found most helpful so we can start to look at that data. Traction, we launched a dashboard in May, and we have about 100 active users so far. I would love to say a million, but the great thing about the 100 is they validated, they've come from all four of these sections. So they've purchased anonymously, they've purchased for themselves, they've given to someone else, and they've uploaded resources. So that's really exciting. Yeah. Way to go, Zach. Your slides always look great. You look very Thanks. nice. Thanks. Uh, what's, the long -term, what's your long-term objective for CancerQ? Where, where do you want this to be in, in five years, two years, whatever your like, long-term timeline is as far as you've gotten? Yeah, the fascinating thing, uh, Fiona, is that we've gotten a lot of requests to actually apply this same model to different diseases. So we're not necessarily biased just to cancer, but I th we think there's a real framework here for getting organized, especially for chronic illnesses. And as internet and access to information increases, it just contributes to that sense of overwhelming amount of information. So one is applicable to other diseases. Another element, too, is kind of going back to this life cycle here that we want to close. We have a lot of ideas and projects into development to really improve digital memorialization which is really terrible if everyone's had to go through that. Um, like I had 50 voicemails on my phone from when my mom passed away, and we often don't talk about that, but how do you get that data? And once I got connected into some grief communities, a lot of people had that same issue. And so we're really looking on the memorialization, and then also in the pre-stage, having fun, open dialogues about cancer, you know, so you know where to go to when it hits. Question in the back. Um, this is Sounds like there's probably a lot of nonprofits out there that are operating in similar areas. Are there any nonprofits that you've approached, approached you? I just see that as a natural synergy. Yeah, great question. Um, there are a lot of nonprofits and they do wonderful work. We're positioned where we want to help you navigate what they do so you know where to turn to and navigate their resources. Uh, we feature a lot of nonprofits' work in our curated dashboard resources. Uh, we're talking to them about cross-promotional for marketing. Uh, we're also featured at a hospital here 
that I'm no longer allowed to say who they are, um, where they're promoting CancerQ in partnership as a third party resource. So there's also a big integration that we're working in with existing medical institutions and how they make recommendations for third party resources. Oh, sorry. Uh, genomes are uh, very important when it comes to cancers. Who's your top healthcare uh, uh, official that you're working with to gather this information? Did, uh, you'll never know. <laughs> Thank you, guys.